Today, Taiwan's defense ministry reporting that in the last 24 hours, 19 Chinese fighter jets flew over Taiwan's air defense zone. The jets never crossed the median line of the Taiwan Strait that has served as an unofficial barrier between China and Taiwan. Taiwan forces did send up its own Air Force planes. They say they use their normal protocol in response to a potential Chinese incursion. This is nothing new from China. Since last August, the communist nation has been staging war games near Taiwan. China claims its activities are justified to defend its territorial integrity and also to warn the U.S. against colluding with Taiwan. And earlier today, I spoke with Taiwan's representative to the United nice States to speak Ambassador to you. Shu. Well, thank you for your interest. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, um, we read so often about the Chinese flying their fighter planes just recently uh, mm -hmm. around Taiwan. Um, how, how much fear is in Taiwan that China is really going to invade? Well, unfortunately, such harassment uh, with the fighter jets, as well as a maritime presence around Taiwan, has become a norm. Um, they have been doing this, actually, for decades, but recently intensified. Uh, we are indeed very concerned about this, um, the psychological impact on our society, um, the threatening a language coming out of Beijing is uh, quite alarming, and uh, we know that we have to do uh, more to bolster our defenses in response. When you say the language from Beijing um, was coming out of Beijing, has it changed at all since um, President Xi has been able to see what's happened with President Putin in Ukraine? Has that had any influence in terms of, uh, of how they operate towards you, or, or any thoughts about that? Well, unfortunately and tragically, um, the threatening language has intensified uh, in recent years, and that continues uh, to be a reality that we have to face. Um, but uh, I think our society has overcome very challenging circumstances for decades, uh, including the termination of diplomatic ties with most major countries around the world, um, including um, very difficult political circumstances in Taiwan in the past. But we have um, overcome those challenges and created a full-fledged democracy. And so I think while we are dealing with a very difficult threats uh, to our existence. Uh, the people of Taiwan are also very resilient. And we intend to continue uh, to carry on with our lives. Uh, we intend to continue to build our economy uh, to be a force for good in the world, despite uh, these challenging circumstances. I understand that, you know, this is your job and, and political leaders' job. But if, if I were in Taiwan, I'm sitting at a, in a restaurant, mm -hmm. would the people at the next table be talking about this? Or have you just been so accustomed to sort of the belligerent nature of Beijing towards Taiwan? Or, or is it an everyday constant thought by the people of Taiwan? Well, uh, we can't let these threats define the way we live our lives. And uh, so I think the people of Taiwan, while well aware of the external challenges we face, um, are very much preoccupied in making Taiwan a better society, in advancing our economic progress, in making friends with the world. Do you feel a little bit at all like sort of a proxy war between the United States and China? In a sense that um, is that it you know, is that it's, it's the United States will, for instance, U.S. representatives will will go to Taiwan knowing that it's going to be provocative to China. Um, do you feel like you're sort of caught between between the two countries or not? Well, I think um, it's important to to clarify one point, and that is. I don't think um, friends visiting Taiwan is provocative. The only place for the word provocative is uh, with the leadership in China. Um, I, I think it's important that Taiwan continues to engage with the world. Uh, we cannot let uh, China draw red lines around Taiwan as a noose strangling our international breathing space. Um, but I think at the same time, um, we um, need to make sure that our agenda for preserving our democracy and for ensuring that freedom persists in Taiwan uh, is well supported internationally as well. Well, when we see this uh, former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, went over mm -hmm. last summer, that immediately, you know, got the Chinese all revved up. And, and the only thing that, you know, that I wonder is that, is the United States saying, we dare you to China by doing mm -hmm. that? Or are they really helping Taiwan by going there? Mm -hmm. Or are they, are they just daring China to, uh, to invade Taiwan? Um, I think our interests are aligned in terms of our partnership with the United States. Um, our, we, our interests are aligned in the sense that uh, we are working to preserve peace and stability in the region. Um, that is our top priority. Uh, it's our survival instinct. Um, and I don't think 
we are looking at a proxy war. Uh, we're not looking at a proxy conflict between countries. Uh, rather, we are looking at a competition of systems. And the greatest difference between Taiwan and the society that we see in China is that um, our government is elected by the people and serves the people. Well, the goal um, and in China, we are looking at a very different type of a political system. And that is the main confrontation that we are seeing today. Well, the United States, I think, looks at Taiwan as sort of its goal is its democracy, is the fact that you have elected officials compared mm -hmm. to China. Um, but your other goal is your semiconductor industry. I mean, you, you are the world's leader in that. I mean, that's what China's got their eyes on. And of course, the United States is, you know, is very much dependent on that. Do you see the semiconductor uh, industry as being so important? in this? Well, Taiwan has an important role to play in the world. Uh, we are a force for good. Uh, we contribute to global technology and uh, economic advancement. And uh, we continue to seek to play uh, that constructive role in the global economy. Um, the, the chip industry, as you have pref uh, referred to, uh, is a very important part of our broader economy. And ours, and, too. I mean, yeah. we're, we're married to you on that. I, I believe we will continue to be irreplaceable and indispensable as a contributor to reliable and trusted global supply chains uh, in that sense. And we will continue to work with the world as a force for good. Um, and I believe that it is also in the interests of the people of China uh, to ensure that um, we're all surviving and working for the advancement of humankind in an environment of stability and peace. One last question. What can we do for you? What, can, what, what, do you want, what does Taiwan want from the United States? What kind of help? Well, I think there are a number of areas we are working on. Um, of course, uh, we will continue to build on the very strong defense partnership as codified in the Taiwan Relations Act. Um, I think there is, uh, there are some policy deficiencies on the economic side. Uh, we would like to see more activity in terms of uh, having a trade agreement. We're one of the few major trading partners of the United States without a bilateral trade agreement. Um, we're working on that right now. We'd like to be treated fairly in terms of uh, tax issues uh, globally. Uh, we'd also like uh, fair treatment in the international society, and that is allowing the people of Taiwan to have the freedom and the opportunities to contribute and participate in the international system. Ambassador, very nice to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you.